Well, hello everyone. Welcome again to the Saturday slot. Hope you're all well and like me, waiting to see what's ahead of us perhaps in the next few weeks. I'm trying not to get too excited yet though. I think there are still lots of plans to be made for those in authority. A lot to plan for indeed. It's really hard, isn't it, not to plan ahead. In my retirement, I have been just as busy as when I worked full time, albeit in a different way. But my diary has been used as much with the various church and community activities I'm involved with uh, as a volunteer, and of course all the meetings that go with it. I've always been an organiser, and so many of our events that I had planned in my diary have all been cancelled. This weekend, actually, I should have been at the Lay Conference, the Diocesan Lay Conference in, in uh, Swanwick. Something I've enjoyed on a number of occasions in the past, and it's a really good time when you meet old friends from various parishes and meet new ones as well, too. Um, and also a time to refresh and inspire what we do in church. Usually the standard of speakers and workshops on offer is always excellent. So I'm re really disappointed that that's one thing that's been cancelled. Forward planning is very often one of the pleasures of an event, especially a holiday, a weekend away, a retreat, a family celebration. The anticipation and making plans can sometimes be as enjoyable as the actual event. Last summer, I had a big holiday when I went to China to visit my son Richard and his family. Yes, China, we've heard a lot about that. And who would have known then about the significance of it now? Anyway, a great deal of planning had to go into this holiday. I stayed in a hotel because there wasn't room in my son's apartment and it was also six floors up and no lift. So this was a really good time for me to spend in a hotel because the family were working and my grandson was at school until mid afternoon. So I lived the life of luxury in the flat, in the hotel for three weeks. Anyway, we made lots of plans, what we would do together. And I made plans for what I would do alone while they were busy. I'd bought a new book. It was a book of daily reflections called Soul Fuel by Bear Grylls, the adventurer, presenter, the present chief scout, and a deeply devout Christian too. It was really a gift I was taking for Richard, but I read it whilst there. And then I bought another when I came back, as I found it so useful as a daily read. So I thought today it would be good to share perhaps some of the reflections from one of the chapters. And the chapter I've chosen is all about hope. Hope and trust in God is something I think we're all holding on to just now. The word of God and our faith gives us hope in all circumstances. So, this is his book, Soul Fuel. And just to set the scene, about 25 years ago, Bear Grylls had a really bad accident whilst on one of his adventures. He was skydiving with friends, as he'd done many, many times before. And something, however, went wrong with the parachute. He crashed down, hitting the sun-dried earth with great force. And he broke his back in three places. And as he lay on the ground in agony, he knew that his life had been changed forever. And this is what he wrote at the beginning of the chapter on hope. I didn't know the extent 
of the damage at the time that I had shattered three key vertebrae in my back and I would go on to spend months in and out of military rehabilitation back in the UK, strapped into braces and unable to move freely. But in those, those first few minutes as I lay there, one thing I did know was that my life would be changed forever. Sometimes it isn't until we get knocked down that we find which way is up. Sometimes it isn't until the sky clouds over that we notice the light. And sometimes it isn't until we lie in the gutter that we begin to see the stars. The light of God has been the greatest source of hope this world has ever known. We can never be so far away that the light won't reach us. Sometimes it's good to be reminded of that. Hope will always win and the light of Christ reaches everywhere. Well, the chapter that followed was the one that made most impression on me. And through a selection of Bible texts and linked life experiences, there brought meaning to many familiar Bible words, biblical words. So the first one I'm choosing, he uses the words of the first letter of Peter, the beginning of the first chapter. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So what does Bear Grill say about this? He says, we all face times when faith feels hard to find. When troubles line up in front of us, it can seem like trusting God is crazy. And love and kindness get us nowhere. And as for hope, well, we hope things will improve. But that's about it. But faith, hope and love, from the, Greek, the three great theological virtues. And hope is a lot stronger than we might think. As Father Raniero Cantalamessa wrote, he used to be an aide of the Pope. He wrote this. These great virtues of faith, hope and love are a little bit like three sisters. Two of them are grown up and the other is a smaller child. They go forward together hand in hand with the child hope in the middle. Looking at them, it would seem that the bigger ones are pulling the child. But really, it's the other way round. It's the little girl who is pulling the two bigger sisters. It is hope that pulls faith and love. Without hope, everything would stop. So never underestimate the power of hope, however small that hope may feel. Sometimes in survival, in life and in faith, an ember is all we need. He goes on to say, whatever you're facing, you're not alone. Let whatever small bit of hope you can find inside lead you on. Ask for God's presence and put your hand into his. Faith and love will flow from that. And always remember, Christ beside us and Christ within us. Christ to win us. Well, what does that mean for you at the moment? However you feel, whatever you do now or for future plans, we all need to feel God's presence beside us, don't we? Beside us and within us to give us the hope to take us forward. And just another one which really struck me. This time it's a text from Romans 
chapter 15. I'm sure you've all heard this many times before. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the prayer to start the day, isn't it? And there goes on to say, whenever we find ourselves wondering how we're going to get through the tough times in life, the answer is found in where we look for our hope. Being hopeful is much more than mere wishful thinking. Because of what Christ did for us, we have total confidence in being full of hopefulness. And because of the way the Holy Spirit works, there's a constant source of hope being nurtured and tended deep inside us. This hope is the driving force for our day-to-day -day living. Erwin McManus, who is a pastor and a motivational speaker, he commented, hope lifts us out of the rubble of our failures, our pain and our fear, to rise above what at one point seemed insurmountable. Our ability to endure, to persevere, to overcome is fueled by this one seemingly innocuous ingredient called hope. I hope you can see why that book has inspired me. A few more words on the theme of hope. Paul, who wrote the letter to the Romans, doesn't pray that you will have a little bit of joy and peace trickling into your life now and then. Rather, he prays that the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace so that you will abound in hope. He piles up these superlatives to show us what God can give us and wants to give us. Our Christian hope is a sure hope. Just think what we do. Most people pay into a pension scheme in the hope that when we do retire, there will be a secure and acceptable pension to live on. But it's not always secure because of the market values, market forces that can change. Hope in our lives always leaves the fear of something intervening to destroy the blessing that hope is for. I know many people have this fear at the moment and broadly it's the fear of the unknown I believe but this is not so for Christ. The Christian hope is a sure and certain hope and the reason for this is that the basis and foundation of this hope does not depend on anything in the world which is dependent on man, all worldly forces, market forces, or anything that we do. The certainty of this hope is that its basis is the complete and all-sufficient work of Christ for us. His death and resurrection meant that all who believe in him can have full forgiveness, and nothing in earth or heaven can take away the certainty of the hope of glory for all who believe. I'm sure you've understood now that reading that Bear Grylls book has had a great impact on me. To read of his deep faith together with all those adventures, his military life first and then his adventures, his fame and popularity as a presenter, and also his time as chief scout, inspiring young people. And to a past scout leader like me, those words have come alive and real. I feel the application of Bible and faith to life experiences is certainly very important, especially for those of us in perhaps leadership roles. And just to end, I want to read what's on the back of his book. 
This is what he says. Any strength I have tends to come from the quiet moments at the start of my day when I'm on my own, taking time to be still with God. Starting like this really helps. It is like food and good fuel for the soul. That really resonates with me. So let us pray. Lord, you bring light and hope to us in all these dark and difficult situations of life. We pray today that more in our world may come to know you and to be able to share in that hope, joy and peace that many of us have found through faith. Lord, we ask for your blessing on those who are struggling without hope. Those who fear for the future with no jobs and changed situations. And Lord, we ask, ask you, give all the strength and hope for them to cope with and plan for the time when we're all able to get back to our familiar lives again. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. So thank you for listening. Keep well and safe and never give up hope. <laughs>